some new products this week. Okay. Yep, we're back with new products. We've got a uh, Noobs 3.1 SD card. Not actual size. Not actual size. <laughs> it's huge. Um, so the um, new Raspberry Pi 4s require Noobs 3.1. We have a bunch in stock of 3.0 because we don't know about the new Raspberry Pi until everybody else does. And so we just made a new uh, product ID for uh, this SKU, which is uh, the SanDisk Edge 16 gigabyte class 10 card um, that uh, is ready to go for Raspberry Pi 4 and below. If you don't have a Raspberry Pi 4 and you are okay with uh, saving a couple bucks, we put our other 16 gigabyte noobs cards on discount. So you can pick those up for less. If you want the official Raspberry Pi HDMI cable, we got them. We have these. These are, yes, these are the official Raspberry Pi over molded cables. They come in white. Hopefully we'll get them in black at some point. Uh, they are micro HDMI to HDMI cables. They're good quality cables. They have, you know, the HDMI Ethernet support, even though they don't do Ethernet over HDMI uh, for the Pi 4 as of yet. Uh, I don't know if they ever will. And um, yeah, the only thing to note is that the connectors are kind of chunky. They're really nice over molded connectors. But there may be some cases or uh, some setups where you can't have such a chunky connector, right. uh, especially if it's flush against a flat uh, background. So like some TVs, if, if the cable has to be very thin. It works with the Pi case, the official Pi case though. It definitely works with the Raspberry Pi case. I'm saying the thing that you plug the HDMI cable into, yeah. like depending on your TV it, yeah, and yeah. monitor. I see. Um, I understand. Yeah, if it's if it's like if the cable really fits in very flush, this might be a little bit too chunky. But okay. it's been fine so far. Um, we have this right angle adapter that goes from 1.1 millimeter uh, inner diameter to the standard uh, 2.1 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter outer diameter. This is pretty much used for the uh, voltaic solar panels that we have stocked. Um, to make them fit into something that takes a standard DC barrel jack, you plug this adapter on the end, you see, and it's a tight fit, it's a snug fit, but you fit it on and then you can plug it into our solar charger. Okay. So we had a, a longer cable uh, this one's right angle. Some people might find that handy. All right, we got a couple of these. Resistors. Um, so there's a couple of resistor values that we had been missing. So we now have 100 ohm resistors. So if you want a pack of 2,500 ohm resistors, for about 75 cents, you can get that. These are your standard 5% uh, um, axial carbon film resistors. They're great. They have the nice thicker leads, so they fit into a breadboard nicely. I've noticed that some people when they go online to get low cost resistors, they have these really thin leads and they don't, yeah. they are too loose in a breadboard. These have the nice standard thickness leads. Okay. And, and uh, we also got 1K. So we've been missing 100 ohm and 1K ohm resistors. So now we have both. All right, next up. Uh, we also have an add uh, additional uh, plug, uh, these panel mount plugs, which I really like. Um, you know, you only have to drill a round hole to attach these to make a panel mount adapter. Um, they're fairly low cost and you can plug whatever cable you want on the other side to make you know, your custom setup. So just showing it off here. Um, this one has USB-C on both ends. So on the input and the output, it's both USB-C and USB-C can be used for power, you can use for data, it can be used for peripheral, it can be used for host. So if you have a USB-C system, this one plug does it all because you can plug any USB-C device and then plug whatever else on the other side because it's a cross-compatible, uh, reversible cable connection. So I think this is the last of the set. We have USB-C to A, and A to micro B, and B to you know A host, whatever. Now we have C to C, which is kind of the last. And uh, hopefully we won't have another revision of USB um, connector types for a while. USB 4. Yeah, I know. Coming soon. Oh boy. Okay. For the iPhone 30. Okay. okay. Um, We've got this, and this this looks just like a. This looks like a. You know, nothing's tube. done gone here. This is just uh, wait, wait. Oh no! Look it's how cool glowy. it is. This is super cool. So we've had the neon LED strips for a while, and uh, we had them in like red, orange, pink, green, blue, and uh, we also had a chunky NeoPixel strip. But now we finally have a. Um, this is a 12 volt LED strip. It's not NeoPixel, so it's not individually addressable. You have to PWM the red, green, and blue component, but you do get RGB LEDs in it. So they finally managed to figure out how to get these to be uh, good enough quality. Um, so yeah, you give it 12 volts and PWM the red, green, and blue to ground, and you can change the color, uh, just like any analog LED strip. 
So it could be good for decorating, staff making neon signage. I'll show it off on the overhead. It's extremely flexible. It's also bright, so it's gonna it's, mess with the camera. Yeah, I know the camera is just like, what are you doing to me? Um, it's extremely flexible, so you can make all sorts of cool shapes with it. And extremely smooth, there's no hot spots, which is really nice. You get a very consistent color all the way through. And remember the whole strip will be the same color. There's no addressable LEDs. We're working on getting a skinny addressable LED version. But this version is a 12 volt power and you need uh, three MOSFETs to control it. It's one meter long and it's totally weatherproof. So I wouldn't like put this underwater for long term, but for outdoor usage, if you want to decorate your bicycle or your backpack or uh, you know some event thing or your float or your costume, uh, this will do the job very well. And of course you can set the color to be any color you like in the world. Okay. So that's flexible LED neon RGB. Oh, Yay!